So I spent quite a lot of time getting my Orange Pi 5 working with a Linux system that I'd want to use, which was KDE, and uh, it's in this video. And the same day that the video came out, this was released, Ambien. So what is Ambien? Ambien is a base operating system platform for single board computers that other projects can trust to build upon. And it's based upon either Debian or Ubuntu. Ubuntu is based on Debian as well. Uh, but it's designed specifically for ARM-based boards, like the Orange Pi, like loads of other single board computers that are around, uh, that often don't have great versions of Linux. And if we go to their download page, and scroll down, or do Control F and start in typing in Orange, we'll soon find a version for the Orange Pi 5, which is this one here. And if you scroll down through, I'm using this on an SD card at the moment. You can see there's various different versions, so this is without a desktop environment. This is a minimal desktop environment, both of those in Debian. And then these are the Ubuntu versions. This is the version I'm using, the one with the Cinnamon desktop, but they also have a minimal and an XFCE desktop. Uh, I can also try and install KDE Plasma into this, although to be fair, this Cinnamon desktop is really, really nice to use. So if I minimize the browser, uh, it comes with Firefox and Chromium as standard. Press the Windows key, you can see that all the information comes up. Uh, what's really good about this, and way better than any of the operating systems, apart from maybe Android, Android's really well supported on the Orange Pi, um, but the Linux versions, they really aren't that well put together. Uh, this is really well put together. Uh, and if I click on Ambien Config, and then pop my password in, we have a whole configuration thing here, just, just like on the Pi, uh, and also we can overclock in this. Now I haven't played around with it enough yet because I've only just recently got it, but if I click on System, you can see there's various different things here. Install to update bootloader, enable Ambien, enable Ambien kernel upgrades, all sorts of things in here. Also set CPU speed and governor. We've got remote access, disable the desktop, change login, all sorts of things in here. If we go back, Loads of network control on here as well. Time zone, language, and host name, but it does that on startup anyway, so I didn't have to mess about with any of that. Software, and you can see there's various different things you can put in here, like benchmarking, diagnostics. We can remove the LibreOffice, uh, which is already installed on there. You can see various things on here are already installed, and there's help and documentation. I, I didn't expect to have this level of integration uh, at such an early stage, and everything I've tried on it has worked. So I went to install Raspberry Pi Imager, which I couldn't get to install uh, the standard way within my KDE Plasma build, which was based on the Debian server build on the Orange Pi website. But this works absolutely fine, just installed it with the ordinary sudo command. We've got a really nice terminal, there's two terminals built into this, but this is lovely and clear for when I'm doing videos on it. And if I go back to that menu by pressing the Windows key, uh, you can just start typing. So if I wanted to say something like Gparted, Gparted is already built in as are a load of other apps if I scroll down through. I've put the Discover tool on and I've also installed the Snap Store as well, but I think everything else that's in here was already installed. NeoFetch was already enabled. Just Raspberry Pi Image I've installed, but it is very full featured and even on the game side of it, I mean, I haven't been too ambitious, um, but uh, even on the game side of it, everything's worked so far. I haven't tried RetroArch yet, but I've tried Assault Cube, which is a first person shooter. And although we haven't got GPU support at this very early stage, uh, this game still works absolutely fine. Now I'm using the trackpad, so uh, expect me to be really bad. And you can see that it runs pretty well. This is running at 720. I've lowered the resolution a little bit. Obviously when we get GPU support, games like this will fly. Um, but, uh, oh. oh, come on. This would be easier on a mouse. Is he hiding? Oh, there's two of them there. It's really hard on the track, but oh, I think I've run out of, oh no, it's reloaded. Oh, there we go, we've got someone. Uh, yeah, I must try this with a mouse, because this is pretty cool, actually. Oh, oh, I'm being shot at. Through the fence. Yeah, that'll do, oh, my, my colleague is there, look. <laughs> it is really good, so let's quit out of that. And the other things I uh, did with games were I haven't tried PR Boom, but we've already done a first-person shooter. Let's do the Game Boy Advance emulator. Obviously not a rich 3D environment. So if we do load ROM and WarioWare. I've got an Xbox 360 controller, which is the, the wireless one that I usually use because it's 
just compatible with everything. Uh, and this is running at three or four times resolution because obviously the Game Boy Advance has got a tiny little screen, but it's all about the gameplay and something like this. So this is loads of little mini games and uh, it just flashes up and you just have to act fast. It gets really fast after a while and I've found that the frames are, are absolutely fine on it. It runs it really well. Again, no GPU support, but that doesn't matter on something like this. And if we want to try a different game, so load ROM, so maybe a bit of Virtua Tennis. Now I've tried PS2 and also GameCube on the Android build because that has Vulkan support and that works really, really well. But again, at this early stage, we don't have GPU support. We don't have hardware accelerated graphics either. I'm amazed they've got this fast, so fast. So here we go. Again, no problems with speed. Uh, it is a really basic game. Oh, I was way off that. See if we can get at least one point. Oh, my opponent is really good. I'm gonna I'm gonna run towards the side of the court to see if oh there you go is he gonna return this? Oh look at that. <laughs> okay, let's just leave it there. But yeah, really pleased that that just installed from the Discover Store. So I one thing I couldn't find was um, a way of installing apps. Obviously, you can do it through the terminal, but I didn't find a a proper like app store. So I installed the Discover Store, which is the one you get in KDE, and I also did the Snap Store. Now, initially, when I installed the Discover Store, and to install it, I used... Let's just open this with mousepad. I need to change that to default to mousepad. So sudo apt get install plasma dash discover. And this is what the Discover Store is like. So you have all these different options for, you know, things like games, education. We've got graphics tools in here as well. All sorts of things. And you just click on it to install it. Super, super easy. But initially, as I put here, it didn't populate. So I installed it, restarted it, and it would come up that nothing was there. Now, I don't know if it just needs time to initially start up, but whilst I was installing the Snap Store, it started to work, and it's worked ever since, and it's been working absolutely fine. And when you do all the updates, uh, it doesn't seem to get it from an unknown source. So when I go to sudo update, oh, I have my caps lock on, you can see uh, where it's coming from. Ubuntu, Debian, Ambien, because I know a lot of people weren't too keen on the KDE version I had taking it from the Huawei service. But so far it hasn't come up with any errors or any issues or anything not able to update or anything like that. Uh, if we run NeoFax, so if I do control T to open the terminal and type in NeoFax, we are still using that very old kernel, but that's the only one that I think that Rockchip have, uh, have made available. You can see the OS is Ambien and it's 64-bit. I'm running at 1920 by 1080, still running at stock clock speed, uh, 1.8, and you can see that I've got four gig. But yeah, so far, this is really polished, really nice to use, really stable, and uh, the only thing is the GPU support, and I actually don't get as good a video playback as I did in my KDE Plasma from my previous video. Uh, YouTube is even bad at 720. Nothing wrong with the web browser. The web browser is nice and snappy and opens pages and loads up really quick. But yeah, it definitely isn't good on video playback at this stage. So you can see that uh, I think this is 720. And it does drop a lot of frames and it never seems to catch up. It doesn't say it's dropping a lot of frames, but it definitely is dropping a lot of frames. but I definitely can't complain. I'm, I'm really surprised that something so good has been released so early uh, and so usable. I would say this is the best Linux experience on an Orange Pi 5 by far at this stage. And I can't wait to see what they do with all the updates. So if you want to install this version, I can actually demonstrate it on this. So if we go to the Ambient site, uh, which if you open up Firefox, it usually gets you straight there anyway. Go to the download section, scroll down to the Orange Pi 5, which is here, and then scroll down again. There's, there's all sorts of instructions and everything. The documentation is really good on Ambien as well, and the forums and everything else. So, uh, as I said before, this is the version I downloaded. Uh, so I just clicked on this one and it downloaded. I then unzipped that file, opened up Raspberry Pi Imager. I did it on my Mac, but this is the same process. Use custom, select that download that you've just unzipped, and then select your storage. And I've just run it to an SD card because it's very easy on an Orange Pi 5 with an SD card. If you just write it with the Raspberry Pi Imager, 
you can just boot it up with that SD card. You don't have to do anything extra. Ambient takes you through several different uh, menus when you're in terminal before the operating system starts and just to ask you things like what you want the operating system to be called, changing the password or creating a password and a few other options, things like time and location, and then you're up and running. So great work by all the team at Army and they've done a really fantastic job with this. And uh, it could be just what this little Orange Pi 5 needs because it's a very, very good price. And to get a really good, stable Linux operating system on it is, is just great. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.